Hello everyone, this is 124san and welcome back to another guide video. Ultra PSO 2 day is finally over, and I've done a serious amount of grinding and affixing during this 3 day long boost. I got my alts ranger all the way from level 1 to close to level 100, and I've accomplished the ultimate 6 slot affix with the added 30% affixing boost. For those of you who still want more of Ultra PSO 2 day, there will be another one on February 21st. The rare drop and EXP boost only applies to premium users, but the affixing boost applies to everyone. With that out of the way, let's start the video. Skill Ring is an important part of base PSO2's gearing progression, but the in-game tutorial does a rather poor job at explaining it. First of all, the tutorial can be missed by new players because it only consists of a few client orders in Franca's Cafe, and there's no indication or incentive to do it other than merely some main mission rewards. As a result, it's often to see players with suboptimal skill rings or no skill rings at all even in high-level content. In this video, I'll go over the basics of skill rings, how to make skill rings, and recommended rings in general and for specific classes. First, what is a skill ring? A skill ring is an equipment that grants you an additional skill when equipped. Skill rings are separated into two categories, left ring and right ring. Left rings usually provide skills that change or enhance the abilities of a particular class. For example, Ranger's Precision Blight Rounds left ring will make your Blight Rounds always land on target as long as you lock onto the part, and Gunner's Forward Stylish Roll left ring enables the use of Frontal Stylish Roll, which cannot be used by default unlike in NGS. Though, there are some generic left rings that can be used by everyone, such as Atomizer Fanatic. Right rings usually provide a watered-down version of an existing class skill, and it cannot be used by classes that already have that class skill. For example, Hunter Physique right ring provides Hunter's Hunter Physique skill to other classes, with less damage reduction and less duration. For both left and right rings, there are composite rings that combine two or three rings kills into one ring. I'll cover more about composite rings later when I explain how to make rings. Normally, you can only equip one left ring and one right ring. However, with the add unit skill function in the item lab, you can add your left ring skills to units that are 12 stars or higher. Therefore, you can essentially have 4 left rings and 1 right ring equipped at the same time. Now that we've covered the basics of skill rings, it's time to make those. To make a skill ring, you'll first want to check the required material for rings you want to make from the ring exchange shop in Franca's Cafe. Usually, a skill ring requires jewels from a specific region, and rocks from the planet of that region. Once you figure out what ring you want to make and what materials you need, head out to the expedition quest of the corresponding region. For example, to make a double saber whirlwind left ring, you'll need to go to Tokyo Exploration to gather Tokyo Opal and Earth Rocks. When gathering, make sure to do the fishing first to trigger gathering fever, then spam harvesting until your harvest stamina is empty. Gathering Fever will give you 2 or 3 materials per gathering attempt, so you'll want to use all of your harvesting stamina during Gathering Fever. Also, each character has their own gathering stamina, so if you have more characters, you can do more gathering on those characters to speed up the process. Gathering materials are used for making most rings, but things are different for Valor Emblem rings. To make Valor Emblem rings, you'll need to get class materials in Elite Training Heaven and Earth, and a class sticker from Elite Training Tainted Border. Once you have enough materials, you can exchange those for your ring back at the ring exchange shop. However, it only comes at level 1, and most ring skills scale up to level 20, with the exception of a few ring skills which have full effect at level 1. To enhance ring level, you'll first need to earn ring EXP by equipping it and earn EXP with your character. If you're doing leveling content, especially bonus keys, you can earn a lot of ring EXP that way. Earning EXP will unlock the ring's level cap, and in the item lab, you can enhance your rings level using more gathering materials. Ring level caps at level 20, at which ring skill has the maximum effect. As I mentioned before, there are composite rings that combine two or three ring skills into one ring. To obtain a composite ring, you'll need to obtain all the prerequisite rings and enhance them to level 20. Once you obtain a composite ring, it has the full effect of all of its skills, so there's no need to enhance it furthermore other than flexing. In this section, I recommend what rings to make, starting off with generic rings. Generic rings can be used by any classes, making them very useful fillers after equipping all the class-specific rings. Atomizer Fanatic makes the animation of using Atomizer items faster, and you are invulnerable during the animation. 
it is very useful when you try to revive someone else, and it makes Star Atomizer a useful panic button that can save you from trouble when you don't know what else to do. Mag Excitement makes your mag's auto action do more damage and reduces auto action's cooldown. It is basically free extra damage from mag if you're using the Geed auto action, which does the most damage out of all auto actions. Leaping Dodge gives you a 5 seconds cooldown high jump skill on sub pallet. It is very crucial, even mandatory, for classes that struggle to gain heights like Double Saber Fighter. Most of the time the previous three rings will be the most useful generic rings, but you may also consider Maid Maniac for faster mate consumption, or Party Toughness for extra damage reduction in group content but useless in solo. Next, I'll go through each class and their recommended rings. For Hunter, Perfect Guard Counter and Hunter Focus Preservation can greatly enhance your gameplay, and should be made ASAP. Perfect Guard Counter is a composite ring made of three Perfect Guard rings for Sword, Wired Lance and Partisan individually, so you can make one Perfect Guard ring for the weapon that you mainly use first. As for the right rings, Critical Strike can pump Hunter at Wiles Crete Rate to max, and is the preferred ring. However, for Hunter Luster, they don't reach enough Crete chance to justify making a Crete build, so they use a Perfection ring instead. Fighter only needs one slot for their class exclusive left ring, which can be Whirlwind and Pursuit support if you want all the skills, or Double Saber Whirlwind if you don't want or don't need the Pursuit effect for other weapons. Double Saber Whirlwind is super duper mandatory for any Double Saber fighters, as it will constantly trigger Whirlwind, which is your main DPS output. As for the right rings, sadly, Fighter has a built-in Critical Strike skill so Fighter cannot equip Critical Strike as a right ring. Instead, Fighter can equip Valor Emblem for creep chance and unconditional damage, or Perfectionist when you can constantly maintain high health even under the reduced max HP effect of Overload. Ranger's most important left ring is Precision Blight Rounds, as it will make your Blight Rounds never miss as long as you're locked on. Launcher non-weak bonus is also important if you're doing mobbing content since some mobs weak points are hard to hit, and some mobs don't even have a weak point at all. With this ring you basically get free extra damage on many mobs. Stationary Mark has no gameplay functionality other than showing a symbol that indicates you're stationary, but it's a decent learning tool for new rangers to learn about how to maintain stationary since rangers do more damage when stationary. Gunner is basically unplayable without their left ring, just like Double Saber Fighter. Gunner needs forward stylish roll ring to be able to use forward weapon action, and later on it can be made into time and roll composite ring. If you're playing any subclass with stance skill, like Hunter's Fury stance and Fighter's Valiant stance, TMG stance up is mandatory since it's basically free 10% damage. By the way, if you're gunner fighter, fighter sub disallows critical strike ring even though you can't get the benefit from critical strike skill on fighter skill tree, so the only option left is valor emblem. Force really wants technique charge parry to be able to parry enemies onslaught of attacks in current content, and quick illusion to make forces dodge actually usable. These two rings can be combined into defense techniques, and it's useful for some other technique classes. If you're playing Force at while, you may consider Mate Maniac since it will be your only way of healing other than Atomizers. Just like Force, Tekka also needs defense techniques. On top of it, Tekka wants alternate 1D change to change wand element against different enemies in order to maximize elemental weakness damage, which is also a part of Tekka's skill tree. The other wand element change ring is not used, because that ring applies to support techniques like Xanverse 2, which is not preferred. Braver's most important rings are Katana Combat Hit Count Up and Bow Homing, which are mandatory for Katana and Bow respectively, and can be made into Brave Power Composite Ring later. If you main Katana, you may also want Grounded Combat to disable the Scuff Pursuit effect during Katana Combat, and if you main Bow, you can use Katana Focus Guard Release to enter release state in Katana by holding Guard, then swap to Bow and keep the release state due to level 85 skill. Bouncers both Soaring Blade rings are necessary for Soaring Blade mains, with Soaring Blade's tackle giving free melee damage when ramming into an enemy with weapon action, and Photon Blade's homing additional 8% damage. If you play Jet Boot, Jet Boot's combo variant SC reduces technique charge time, which is part of Bouncer Phantom's combo, and it can be made into kick and tackle composite ring with the previous Soaring Blade's tackle ring. Summoner just needs defensive technique like Force and Tekka. Though sometimes they can also use situational right rings which will be covered in the situational rings section. Now, we are in Cyan class territory. Hero and Luster do not have any class exclusive rings, so they basically run generic rings on the left slots. For right rings, they can choose between Critical Strike and Perfectionist depending on different content, and different build. 
Phantom has three exclusive rings, with Phantom Lock-On Bomb being essential since it guarantees your marker explosion on lock-on part, which is usually where you want the explosion to land. Phantom Sidestep Shift is very useful on Katana since it grants quick access to Katana's shifted PAs without using weapon action. However, it can be a detriment when using rifle, so it's best suggested to equip Phantom Sidestep Shift at equipped slot instead of unit slot. Etoile has an exclusive ring, Surefire Connect, which can be situationally useful if you're playing Soaring Blades. Though, there are no exclusive rings for other two Etoile weapons. And finally, let's talk about situational rings. These are all right rings that gives access to a water down active skill from a class. Most of the time you don't want to run these over Critical Strike or Perfectionist, since the later two are directly providing more damage, and the extra creep chance from Critical Strike can be crucial. Though, if you are good at micromanaging, you can swap to these rings with a chat command, activate its skill, and swap rings back with another chat command. This can be very useful if you know where to use them and can use chat commands quickly. Oh boy, that's a lot to cover for skill rings. After this video, I hope you learned more about skill rings in PSO2. If you find this video helpful, please consider leaving a like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and peace.